Today on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, those bands and artists that absolutely killed it for one song and one song only. Want to find out who they are? Stick around. You're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, changing rock history one podcast at a time. All right, everybody, welcome back. It is the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Can can everybody hear me out there? Let me know. Just nod if you can hear me. (laughs) Just nod. Just nod if you can hear me. It's the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Our website is ludinirockandrollcircus.com. Coming to you live from Lou's Guitar Lounge in sunny Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. It is the center of the rock and roll universe, Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. If you've never visited... Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. We have Lily V6 in the house with us today. Lily V6, what's going on? Hi. Hiya. Can you all hear Lily? Lily. What's up? What's up? Ludini Rock and Roll Circus.com is our website. Check back off and lots of great podcasts there. You can also find us on Spotify, Player FM, Fa, 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 what's that other thing called? Um, Apple Music. It, it, they changed wow. from iTunes. It's called Apple Music now. Sorry. No, it's iTunes. Is it iTunes? Or Everybody that? knows it's okay. iTunes. Just call it iTunes. Sorry. Sorry. I stand erected. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can find us on, on, all, on all your places. Uh, shout out to our affiliates, Rock Rage Radio, and you can go to rockrageradio.com, and as well as Classic 92.3, and our wonderful sponsor, Wolf's Customs. I'm trying to... Do this about getting a glare on the business card there. Oh, the lights right there, though. If you love, if you go. if you're into uh, custom guitar uh, paint, uh, custom guitar paint jobs, you want to check out Wolf's Customs, Wolf Cus- Wolf'sCustoms.com. And uh, oops, uh, that's Chris's phone number on the back there. So um, yeah, just give him a call. <laughs> so uh, no, appreciate Chris Thunderwolf Dodson at Wolf's Customs. You a big supporter of the Ludini uh, Rock and Roll Circus. So tonight we're going to be talking about one hit wonders. No, not the silly one-hit wonders that, like, Casey Kasem and all those guys, you know, used to count down. We're talking about the rock and metal one-hit wonders. Oh, you mean not the Archies? Sorry. We're not really going to be doing, not really going there. No, I know. (laughs) Uh, No Gloria Gaynor, nothing like that. So, Lily V6 is in the house with us today. Keith the Hawk Hawkins is, I believe, playing a a show with his band. Um, So, Lily... What's going on? Hi. What's new in What's new in your world? I week? just got to see Cheap Trick and Talis perform together on Friday in Farmington, New York, for uh, the ra- the local. I don't know the call numbers, but the local radio show's uh, 50th anniversary. So Billy Sheehan was playing with Cheap Trick on the last couple songs, which was awesome. Oh, neat! So you would have enjoyed that. And then I went to Chuck E. Cheese on Saturday, so you know how that went, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> well, what the heck were you doing, Chuck E. Cheese? Um, a child's birthday I had to attend, but yeah. But tomorrow, it or not tomorrow? Birth- it just admit it was your birthday. I mean, I would have my birthday at Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> if it was just all adults with the wine and beer. Well, they only the give you know you're only allowed to have two beers at Chuck E. Cheese. Um, know? if I rent out that place for myself, I better be drinking more than two beers. Anyway, <laughs> Friday is Billy Idol and Brian Adams, and then Saturday Smashing Pumpkins. So I do have. A busy weekend. Wow, smashing. Where's the, where's uh? Okay, stop. Brian Adams and who? Billy Idol. And where's that going to be? Darien Lake, New York. Okay, near Buffalo. Oh, so you're going up to see the the little man? Yes. yes. And uh, and man. Sm- and Smashing Pumpkins is the same same place. Wow, they get a lot over, of cool shows. There. Staying overnight. Okay. At the venue. All right. So. You, you and, and and you guys do have separate bedrooms, correct? Obviously, yes, and but because I'm a virgin, just just listen. Here's what to do: is in case you guys out there don't know this, if you have to sleep in the same bed with somebody of the opposite sex, just to make sure that everything is you know above board, both of you have to keep one foot on the floor. No, the demon will get you. What? The demon under the bed will get you if you put your foot but out if, of the blanket. But if you don't put your foot mm. on the, then you're going to get into trouble with Jesus. 
<laughs> and he don't. He, you don't want to be in trouble. With I Jesus. am a virgin, so you know. Yeah, I mean that's a thing. You no, know, that's just like something you don't want to happen. <laughs> speaking, I'll, I'll take my risk. Speaking of virgins, <laughs> uh, let's listen to some Thirteen Saints. This is called New York Doll on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. New York Doll, Thirteen Saints. Not to be confused with the New York Dolls. It's just a song by 13 Saints. 13 Saints, you can go to 13saints.bandcamp.com and get all your 13, all 13 of your Saints needs met. Say that 16 times fast, 13 times fast, excuse me. <laughs> I was all, I was almost there and then I messed it up. So close. So close and yet so far away. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, Lily V6 is in the house. Our you resident rock. I know. I can't oh. do anything about it. There's nothing I can do about it at okay. the moment. So, um, cool. so what do we have? We were talking about these uh, band, these rock and metal acts that have one hit. Uh, one hit. So uh, first, uh, let's get into the criteria of what makes a one hit wonder. Okay. Um, music reviewers and journalists describe a musical artist as a one-hit wonder based on their professional assessment of chart success, sales figures, and fame. Since we don't know most of that crap, we're going to go with the second option, which is an act that has won a position on Billboard's National Pop Top 40 just once. So. So you've got to be on the top 40 one time. One time only. One time and only. And that makes you a one-hit wonder. That makes you a one-hit wonder. So, so in other words, there were bands... That, that had, had great a, songs. Had, well, there were bands that had like a second song that came out, but never made, made the top 40. Right. They may but have made like 41, made, and that doesn't count. Yeah, they didn't quite <laughs> get in there um, under that, under the, the, you know, they didn't quite get under the wire there with something like, you know, for example, and I don't know if you have this on your list or not, but there was, this is just to kind of give an example, Honeymoon Suite. Oh, that's not on my list. New Girl Now. But Feel It Again, which is a great song. Didn't, didn't quite, quite get, get there. Quite, didn't quite get there. Wasn't a hit. Wasn't a hit. Good song. It's a good song. But people kind of know it, but never really kind of. Mm. It didn't catch it on. Didn't, after didn't, that. didn't get to that. <laughs> didn't get to that to forty and above. So, Lily, what's let's let's get let's get her done. All right. And what do you got? So the first one I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm sure everyone's familiar with, is Steel Hearts. I'll never let you go, on their debut album. Also, people call it Angel Eyes. That's not the title. But it came out in 1990. They are an American rock band from Connecticut. Um, Connecticut. They, Connecticut. Um, it reached number 14 on the Billboard. Uh, was one of the most requested power ballads at the time. Unfortunately... Excuse me, Lily. You said that wrong. It was a power ballad. I am not that Pittsburgh. Power ballad. A power... <laughs> it did all power ballads, didn't they? You're going to laugh at my last one, by the okay, way. But yeah. Anyway... <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, grunge came about and they kind of got pushed to the wayside, and right. they, they just came about a little too late to be popular. They, they so. yeah, they had. Um, they I were remember when that band so. came out. Um, at the they came out. You, what was it? What were they called again? Steelheart. Steelheart. Okay. They came out in 1989. Right, right. right. Uh, they came out in 1989. I remember when that band came out, and it was just the. the there was a big song. But grunge was like right around the corner. So they never really able to build it up didn't that momentum. Catch, yeah. yeah, to become they like were a little big... too late. On and there was the, a lot uh, of bands like there. that. Yeah, uh, Firehouse, yeah. Nelson, a lot of these bands that were like good bands, but they were just at the. They just came in a little too late for that. So, um, that was their debut album that it came on, obviously, <laughs> in 1990, called Steelheart. Steelheart, ironically enough. So, what else you got? What's who's next? Um, it's another ballad. Uh, but the band Giant. I'll See You in My Dreams, one of my most favorite ballads ever, came out on their debut album as well, uh, Last of the Runaways, in 1989. Um, they were known as a melodic hard rock band formed in 87 uh, by Dan and David Huff. They were founding members of the also Christian rock band Whiteheart. Uh, they scored the one hit uh, in 1990, the power ballad I've seen in my dreams. Uh, they are essentially a bunch of Christian national session players that decided one day to get together as a band and make records of their own. Again, um, this one is mostly forgotten because of the grunge thing once again and great ballad D Dan Huff is a great guitar player uh, uh, on tons of uh, Nashville sessions like tons and tons and tons and tons he's done a lot of country albums uh, as well I became familiar with uh, Dan Huff's work uh, when he was as a result of the band Whiteheart 
and Whiteheart fell in hard times when their lead singer uh, was uh, sent up for um, uh, banging underage girls. <laughs> nah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Christians, it was very you Christian boys, shameful. It was really not long after. Like it was so weird how that all happened. Like all that televangelist claptrap, you know, with the swaggerts and the. Bakers and all that controversy, you know, you know, and he was, th- this is the sort of thing that happened uh, kind of around the time, maybe a few years later, just, oh, but anyway, so yeah, so, um, uh, but, but Dan Huff's a, 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 a monster guitarist as well as a uh, great producer. So he's just super talented anyway. Yep. So yay him. Okay. So wh- who else you got? Um, also I have on my list is Ram Jam's Black Betty. Um, on their debut album, Ram Jam, in 1977. Uh, They were an American rock band formed in New York City in 77. Um, Song became an instant hit with listeners and reached number 18 on the charts. Um, Actually, the lyrics of the song caused civil rights groups, Congress of Racial Equality, and the NAACP to sort of boycott it because they thought it was about a black woman, which it's not. Well, it actually started out as an African-American work song in the 20th century. Yes, it's so. an old, yeah, it's like a traditional song, yeah. yeah. Often credited to, uh, I think it's Hootie Ledbetter, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, but the earliest recordings are actually not of him, but he gets the credit for it Led because Belly. they can't really find it, but I always thought it to be about alcohol. I, I remember dancing to it at Coyote Ugly in Austin, Texas, thinking I just need more whiskey because I feel that's is what they're talking about right now. So, um, yeah, that's their only hit not sure why. I, I need find to, a I need to confer with Lily privately for making me. I just I didn't want to step on your toes. Oh no. <laughs> um, so I want to put. I want to throw one in. Go on. This guy <laughs> was a huge. If you're from the Pittsburgh area, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be doing backflips when I mention say who this is who this is. But Donny Iris, Aaliyah, top 40 hit from a guy from Pittsburgh. But although he had other songs that we enjoyed here regionally, that was really his own. That was his only hit. So, so he is essentially one hit wonder. Although everybody around here knows. He's love, the man. Love is like a rock <laughs> and injured in the game of love and um, Agnes and all those great songs. Do you compute all like killer tunes. But uh, just uh, that was really his only um, hit, if you will. But I, I wanted to go ahead and talk about a little Donnie because uh, just because uh, Pittsburgh, because Pittsburgh, and <laughs> he, it's a great song. And if you if you don't know the song, it's called Ah Leah, Ah A H Leah um, by Donny Iris, and you can find you can just you'll you, find YouTube, it YouTube, but it, it's it's everywhere. <laughs> He's, uh, well, uh, well, he's this, God here. When I when uh, VH1 and I don't know if they still do this, they would do their request hours, and every once in a while somebody would request it. Oh, that's they, cool. And they, would, and they and they would uh, they would play it. <laughs> Pretty cool. You know, it it took me forever to figure out that he was from Pittsburgh. You probably did, probably till I was like thirteen. I'm like, I don't even know who this guy is. I feel that's forever. Yeah, Pittsburgh um, p- played a lot a lot of other his other songs, but. Alia was his big national hit. So go ahead, Lil. What do you got? Um, so I have a newer one. When I say newer, it's within the last 20 years. Um, Weedus' Teenage Dirtbag came lot. out when I was in uh, college, my first year of college. Um, they're an American rock band formed in Northport, New York in 95, known for Teenage Dirtbag, which is a super cute song, and it mentions Iron Maiden. Um song was written by lead singer Brendan Brown about a childhood experience of his that reached number seven on the billboards and was featured in the movie The Loser um, the HBO miniseries Generation Kill which um, I did not see and I wanted to and an acoustic opening for the film Bully um, about you know and it, it was an anti-bullying uh, film um, and the Netflix Netflix original Girl Boss so it's it's a very movie show friendly kind of song and it's fun and I love it and I don't care it's what it like says. let my love open the door by Pete Towns and that's in a ton, that's in tons of movies too <laughs> yeah. people just like super cute I'm gonna throw that song in yeah I love Teenage Dirtbag by Weedus 
Yeah, just the fact that they mention Iron Maiden, that just kind of gets... I'm like, oh my God, the girl likes Iron Maiden. You mentioned Iron Maiden, I'm I'm in, I'm in, that's all I needed to hear. That's all I need, we're good. They're going to go to an Iron Maiden concert. (laughs) Let's do it. Which I'm sadly missing next weekend. It's, uh, you know, what's funny is songs like that, a lot of these, like, sort of romantic songs are total bullshit. It, It took me a long time to realize that, that this are just like... This is not how romance works at all. So there's a line uh, by the drive-by truckers that says, rock and roll means well, but it can't help telling young boys lies. And that's <laughs> pretty much it. And yeah, so don't be thinking that, you know, you're going to be a nerd and like the hot chick's just going to come up to you and say, let's go to see Iron Maiden. It's, yeah, that's probably not that's what's going to happen. probably not going to happen. In fact, her boyfriend is probably going to kill you. He probably um, does have a gun. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. So so just 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 be aware of that. And drives an Iraq. Sorry, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't have a mullet, but I mean, could come back, I suppose. The, uh, there's a band named the Iraq Mullets. <laughs> you need to stop yourself. <laughs> I wrote it down. Chloroform prom date. I still have it written down here. <laughs> Is that your idea booklet? <laughs> Okay, what, I know we're just kind of going here. We're going to play another song. Do one more. We're playing a song. All right. Um, Blind Melons, No Rain. Um, do, 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 from their do, 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 debut do, 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 do. album, Blind Melon, in 1992. American rock band formed in Los Angeles, best known for the 1993 hit, No Rain. They enjoyed critical and commercial success in the early 90s. No Rain was the second single released on the band's debut album. The song is well known for the B-girl in the videos. Everyone knows. Uh uh, it's the band's highest charting song at number 20. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot see where this band may have went, and they probably could have easily gone further and had more hits. But uh, Shannon Hoon had a fatal overdose, and he passed away in 1995 on his bus to New Orleans. So sadly, we lost Shannon and ba- basically lost the band. So. What is? Uh, I want to make a little comment about that band because um, a lot they're known for that song. But if you buy that album, that's the only song like that mm-hmm. on that album. They're they're more like um, the Black Crows meets Spin Doctors, okay, yeah, yeah, kind of sound. They're, they're more of a jammy kind of band uh, with a kind of real blues, blues based stuff, funky riffs and everything. So it really was a shame, especially in light of what happened. Later, with the jam scene really exploding, this is a band that really probably could have like been really big in that. Even if they never had any other, you know, big radio hit, big radio songs, um, they had that like great musicianship mm-hmm. in the tradition of bands like the Black Crows and uh, Spin Doctors and, and, and ba- <laughs> bands like that and Fish. Ah! Oh, stop with the Fish! <laughs> I don't. Anyway. I can't do twenty minute songs. Yeah, I know. This is um, this is a lo- local band that I really love. Actually, I've worked on the bass player's uh, vehicle a few times. <laughs> this is Storm Dragon. Strike me down on the Ludini rock and roll circuit. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's killer! Strike me down by Storm Dragon. I love them. Storm Dragon is a local band, very local, actually. They're very local. Like They're Washington, right down the road. PA or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> go to facebook.com backslash Storm Dragon Band. Check those guys out. Their it, website's great too. Yeah, just 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 a just a great old school metal. You know, not uh, you know, and they're not trying to like reinvent the wheel or do anything crazy. Nope. It's like. Let's just play great metal, and uh, that's just what we're going to do. And they're super nice guys, too. Shall I read some comments? Well, you know what? Yeah, let's do some comments. Oh, okay. Um, Chris Thunderwolf is here, Wolf Customs. Uh, Tim Paul is watching us. Brian Wingo says, Quiet Riot. I will have some things to say about that <laughs> later. Um, Chris said our video was blurry. It's probably. Is it okay now? Let us know. Leroy Ellis says, I am here. Charlie Doyle is watching. He says, what's up? Um, and thank you for wishing him happy birthday. Uh, Leroy Ellis said that woman that talks on the show is a hottie plus very cool. Thanks. <laughs> thank um, you. Or- Orly Blakesley, awesome rock rage. Uh, Forrest Bowman's watching. Um, Brian Wingo again said Talis never had a hit but should have. Uh, Chad Duckett says hi. 
Greg Fruwald, hello from Northern Ontario, Canada. Chris Thunderwolf said he learned to play that song by watching the video. I think you were referring to Giant, but I could be wrong. Uh, Chad Duckett said, what about Led Zeppelin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris Thunderwolf said Led Zeppelin has more than one hit. Um, Rock Mullet's Gotta Make It Modern, Bill well, Damiano. Good, good. I'm going to say it by that, but go ahead. Uh, Tuck Shepard said, play something good, which we just did. Um, Bill's talking to me about the thing the other night. And then Charlie and Bill are talking. Um, and nope, it's still blurry, he said. Zach Hibbard, Hey Rock Rages is Zach with 5th and SYC. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. Much love. And Chris. Just give me a second, sorry. And nope, it's still blurry, he said. And look at it. Does it look blurry to you? No, we're not blurry. No, we're not blurry. We're looking at it right now. And then uh, Chris Thunderwolf said Steelheart. So that's so, what we have. But um, let, it, could be, it could be your internet connection. Also, the focusing, go, if we move around too much, the focusing goes in and out. Um, support me on Patreon. Maybe we'll buy a better fucking camera. Right? Duh. Uh, Patreon.com backslash Lou Lombardi. Seriously, guys. You know. You know, we, we do appreciate the uh, all the shares and everything. You guys are doing really good with the shares. And I have to, I have to you know, give credit where credit is due. The fact that you guys are doing the shares, I appreciate that. Give us a little bit of love with a little bit of money, baby. Exactly. I'll get some better video equipment and some better, some better encoders and better lighting, and we will have like a whole thing here, man. I'm gonna do like I'll be like I'll be like the, the, the Joe Rogan of rock and roll. Tim Just Paul, call me rap a rapper, peen ice. Tim Paul says it's clear in Arizona. <laughs> Good, Tim. Yeah, I mean, sorry. There's, there's the. Let me sort of sp- let me explain you. The the yeah. video portion of this is a kind of bonus thing. The podcast is really what's getting recorded and s- put out there on all the places. So you're getting just like kind of like an inside look. You know, we're just here to kind of give you a little extra entertainment. Um, so we do our best, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, some better uh, video equipment and internet stuff would uh, help. And if you can uh, help us out on Patreon, appreciate that. Patreon.com backslash, <laughs> backslash Lou Lombardi. Uh, any other uh, shout outs or anything you want to do before we? That's all we got. Oh, wait. Watch, uh, Virgil Schaefer just popped up watching from Bristol, Tennessee. I'm going to be in Nashville Friday night and Saturday. So come see me at Rockin' Pod. I will uh, post it uh, again. I've been posting it on my page. Uh, so I'm looking forward to meeting um, Michael Sweet and Dave Elson and some of these different people. See, I said it right. I was going to say. And Billy Altman's watching. Billy Altman. Don't go to bed, Billy. Hang out with us. And Billy, go. Here's what I want you to do, Billy. Don't be what? a hero. I want you to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I said it. I used to say it. Uh, <laughs> go to your parents' liquor cabinet. Not <laughs> just. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> he's he's back, but he's been really busy lately. Uh, it's good to see you, brother. <laughs> I I um I'm doing a presentation at Rock and Pod on doing the these lives and how like fun they are and how they help grow your fan base. And I created a PowerPoint. And there's a lot of they tell you when you do a PowerPoint, make sure you put a lot of pictures in because people get really bored with just putting your yeah, that's script legit. up there. So I put a lot of pictures in, including Billy, picture of you, picture of Chris and Raven, picture of Josh, Podrat, and some people like that that are, you know, they're called, Bill Damiano, you guys that are always supporting things. So as an example, of some of our, our, fans. our super fans. So, um, you know, you guys are going to become Nashville famous, whether you like it or not. Mm. And, and there's lots of pictures of you, Lily. Ooh, good. <laughs> And Keith, so, so, all yeah, so, so it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's gonna be uh, in Nashville on uh, the Friday night. Is the uh, there's like a little pre party, and then main the main event is Saturday. So you guys can check that out. Um, just uh, just Google uh, 2019 Rock and Pod Nashville. You can find all the information. All right, um, back to the action. Back to our regularly scheduled program already in progress. I- all right, so my next one on the list of one-hit wonders is, and yes, me. Oh, sorry, no. 
You're not a one-hit wonder. And Leroy Ellis says, share people. Thank you. Um, Norman Greenbaum, Spirit in the Sky. Which I love. I request this to be played at my funeral. Lay me to rest. Because it would be ironic. Anyway, it was on their debut, or his debut, Spirit in the Sky, 1969. He was an American singer-songwriter, best known for writing and performing this song. The song had a combination of heavy guitar, hand clapping, and spiritual lyrics. Sold over two million copies, and the single became a gold record, reached number three on the charts, and remained in the top 100 for 15 weeks. Greenbaum was inspired to write the song after watching Porter Wagner sing a gospel song on TV, and he wrote it in 15 minutes. So, you know, there's a lot of stories like that about like songs coming like really quick and being like really impactful. <clears throat> Classics. It's not unheard of. Uh, but it's not a hard or fast rule. But this 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 definitely um, does happen. Surprisingly. I love that song. I, I wanna, love it. I Let me ask you a question. Funeral. I wanna oh, I'm gonna bring up something controversial. Do it. Um, because there is uh, if you go to VH one's channel, the they are VH one's page, they have a um, a list of the heavy metal Heavy metal. I'm going to put that in quotes. So you real metal heads, please don't get pissed off. This is VH1, all right? Uh, their list of one-hit wonders. And they have one on here that I just don't agree with. I do not agree with that. I saw that, too. And like, that is no. uh, Queen's Reich's Silent Stupidity. I mean, Silent Lucidity. And um, it's, it wasn't like Jet City Woman. I and, thought that was um, up there. Eyes of a Stranger. Weren't those all big songs? I didn't do. I didn't check them. Be the best I can. But I thought they had way more hits than just the one. I could be wrong. Yeah. But I thought. And and they've got extremes more than words on there. But I thought wholehearted. I thought was yes, also a really big. Hit it is. For them. I actually checked that one. That one is in the made the top forty. Yeah, somebody made a comment. Jason McMillan, Queensryche is a one-hit wonder? Question mark. Extreme has oh, is a one-hit <laughs> wonder. Who the hell is the clueless moron who wrote this article? Queensryche is a 62 hit wonder, says Larry Bat- Battenfield. He's probably right. But um, some of the ones on this list real quick. And this is a great song. This is a band that I think is so good. And it's just really a shame that they really had only one really big song. And that's Living Color, called The Personality. Yes, Glamour Boys, song. they had a video and it went up. But it wasn't nearly... And it's a different kind of song altogether. It's not even like really a... It isn't real. That song isn't even real representative of their sound. Mm. Call, call to where call to personality is, and really, I have their first three albums, and they are absolutely killer. And it's just uh, unfortunate that um, that they didn't get more than yeah, one. Yeah, they just you know it just you know this is an example too. I think of bands like there's just so many so much room on the radio. I've said this before. And there's other bands happening. Other things. Other record labels are pushing different stuff, and. Sometimes bands just kind of like they just don't quite quite get their due because there's other things happening at the at the same time that maybe has more money or interest behind it and that's what happens. These things, um, you know. Here's here's one I really love, and that's, that's and spe- specifically for the video, and that is Green Jelly's Three Little Pigs. You're, 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 yeah, yeah, I know. That it, one. It's a <laughs> it's a really heavy song. It's, it's a kind of an alternative rock song. It's fun. But it's really fun. And it, it's got this amazing stop motion animation video. Which that, are my favorite kind. I love that stop motion. <laughs> it's just like, I'm fascinated. By it. I can watch it all day. That mm-hmm. just blows my mind. Yeah. And speaking of stop motion animation, and I will get back to Lily's list here in a second, is have you ever seen Primus's yes, uh, I video of ask. Devil Went Down to Georgia? Yes. That's got great stop motion animation, too. And it's a great uh, cover of that song. So. Anyways, um, go ahead, Lil. What do you got next? Um, my next one on my list is Mountains Mississippi Queen on their debut album, Climbing, in 1970. Uh, American rock band formed in 69 on Long Island, New York, best known for their cowbell tinge song, Mississippi Queen, as well as their performance at Woodstock in 1969. Um Mississippi Queen's considered a rock classic. It was their most successful, reaching number 21 in the Billboard charts. And, of course, came from the debut album, Climbing, like I already said. So I don't know why I'm saying it again, because I wrote it twice, apparently. Um, <laughs> but I love that song. I got to meet Leslie West and interview him. Oh, yeah? So if you go to LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com and scroll back through, or uh, Ludini.Podbean.com, uh, you go just scroll back to the podcast or search Leslie West, Leslie West, Ludini, whatever. You'll find it on there. Uh, it was it was really, he's funny as fuck. 
He's a really funny guy. This, when I when I had him on, I realized why Howard Stern loves him so much and had had him on so many times because he's just he's he's got this great voice. He's got this great speaking voice, and he's wildly entertaining. His hilarious stories. Nice. So uh, I love the yeah, stories. So if you want to hear some funny stories about the good old days of rock and roll, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, um, he said that they were playing someplace, <laughs> and. He said, he said they're playing. I think they were playing the song um, "Theme from an Imaginary Western" or some big. And he said they're rocking out really hard. He saw also not all. He sees all the lights turn, on, all the house lights come up, and they're like, "What the heck's going on?" And he says he sees this. He sees this this crowd part, and these two guys from with an, from an ambulance with a stretcher come running down. And he says, it was all kind of commotion. He couldn't tell what was going on. And he said, Louis says, I had this feeling that somehow my brother had something to do with this. And he found out after the show that his brother had a heart attack, like he had overdosed and had a heart attack. Oh, my attack God. During the thing. But he lived. And well, that's good. He says, he, says, he says, the next day or two days later, it was Thanksgiving. And they were at the, their mom's house. And their mother was like beating their brother like over the head, yelling at him for ruining. Li- you ruined your brother's concert. That's legit, too. I feel like that would happen. <laughs> but Leslie tells the story way better. So um, check it out. Uh, just a you know, fun guy. A great interview. So what, do you, what else you got there, Lil? <clears throat> Next on my list is Freeze All Right Now. And it took them to their third studio album, Fire and Water, in 1970 to actually get that hit. Uh, their English rock band formed in London in 1968. Uh, they disbanded in 73, and Paul Rogers became the lead singer of Bad Company. Yeah, they reformed basically without Paul ha- ca- Casas, along with Simon Kirk. And all right, now reached number four spot on the Billboard and originally appeared on the album Fire and Water. Uh, was recognized in 1990 for having over one million radio plays in the U.S. Killer song, only and one. Paul Rogers and um, Steve Marriott are two of my absolute favorite. I don't know why I mentioned Steve Marriott. Or do you have Humble Pie on your list? Mm-mm. Okay, uh, but. Yeah, the, the, I, I was, Paul Rogers is one of the greatest rock singers of all time. One of my heroes. What more can you say? Oh yeah. Bad Company was a great band. I love Bad Company. All, uh, um, but but Freeze, all, is it that 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 was a great band? But they were plagued by you know they had this brilliant guitarist who just couldn't get his act together when it came to drugs. He just and it was just unfortunate. So what else you got? I got Zach Hibbard saying this is a great show. Zach, we love you, <laughs> Zach. You're a good Zach, you're a good boy. <laughs> and then this is where Lou gets weird. <laughs> Getting weird? <laughs> For the evening. Anyway, Nazareth is next on my list with Love Hurts. Six studio album, Hair of the Dog, 1975. Oddly enough, Hair of the Dog did not make a top 40 placement. Um, Scottish hard rock band formed in 68 took the name from Nazareth PA which is kind of cool which is cited in the first line of the the band's not this band but the band's classic song The Wait they established an international audience with the 1975 album Hair of the Dog which featured the hit Love Hurts um, like I said it did feature Hair of the Dog but that reached 44 so it did if not you count are, if you're a drunk redneck <laughs> you might better know the song is Now You're Messing with the Son, son of, of a Bitch, bitch. it's Commonly what it's known Can you guys called. play now you're messing with a son of a bitch? <laughs> oh, I hate you. Hair of the Dog received extensive radio play due to the popularity. Love Hurts was first recorded by the Everly Brothers in 1960, so it is a cover. Can you guys know any standard, huh? Can they see Nazareth? Play some Freebird. <laughs> with Nazareth, it was Sorry, I got some sharp ones up in there. Go get them out. Nazareth, it was the most popular version of the song, and it made the top ten on the Billboard 1975. And is performed as a power ballad. It is also featured in several, several films and video games, as such as The Doors, Spaceballs, Wayne's World, Empire Records, Dazed and Confused, Rockstar, The Rocker, Guitar Hero, and Rock Band. Plus more. I didn't want to name them all. Yeah, great band. Not, not, not much more I can say about that. Rock, rock and rollers, like Lily and I, are probably more leaning towards Hair of the, of the dog, dog as a song, but it wasn't a big billboard hit 44 although although it's played on r- classic rock radio all yeah. the time yeah yeah all the all time, the time. it all just the time. never really made it there yeah just needed a little yeah, more push. just need a little push you guys didn't buy enough copies what the fuck now what? i'm sorry my blood i'm getting my blood up y'all need, are making out to love hurts though right? I, I need another drink here speaking of another drink let's play another song okay 
Oh, I you, I love this band so much, Lily. Which one? Oh, uh, I I wish I I would love to be in this band. Will you just name it? Actually, I want to be in almost every band we play on here. But this is Reign of Z. Oh yeah. And so we're gonna play some Reign of Z, and we're gonna come back. And we're gonna. I think we got some people that chimed in on our Facebook post this week. So we want to talk about that. And I think Lily, you have what a couple more. I have two more, and then my argued argumentative ones. If you want to get into those. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna come right back. This is Reign of Z on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Oh my god. <laughs> Dysmorphia by Reign of Z. I just think that band is so freaking amazing. I love female friends. Someday bands we're going to have like to that. do a um a podcast where we talk a little wee bit and give give the audience a um um what's the word I want? Like a sort of insight into the evolution of the music scene in Pittsburgh. Yeah, because when I first started playing music in bands live in my early 20s, if a band was local, it was very obvious. Every the, all the local bands sounded local. They, they, it, nobody it had that kind of, and it really there was a, occasionally somebody would really Donny Iris, B. E. Taylor, um, the Gathering Field, the Clarks, Rusted Root mainly. Right, was, was really really had a big, you know, and th- those bands all, but ninety percent of the other bands all had this kind of like very kind of like hometown homespun kind of vibe, and you just couldn't picture them or hear them in your mind being like on MTV. Although some of them were the Silencers and some of these bands did have some got some play on MTV, but for the most part, you just it really wasn't a thing, really until. Don Ayer, Don Ayer kind of predates MTV a little bit. Although he did have, there's a video to Aliyah. It was really Rusted Root that was the band that had ended up being the really because they got the song in the Disney movie and and all that like mm. and that stuff like that. Mm. And Santana played with them and, and all things things like that. But nowadays we're playing we're playing a lot of these bands that are from Pittsburgh and they just like like a Storm Dragon. They're from freaking Washington, Pennsylvania. Um. And they like, sound what? like, I mean, in terms of the production and the songwriting quality and the performance and everything, it sounds like any just great metal uh, track you can have. I, w- there's been a real evolution uh, with music in this area, and it's I think it's really exciting. Um, there, I, and I actually know a couple of people that, that moved to Pittsburgh from Los Angeles. You know... Because they said the scene was better. We could do a show and do a whole, like, talk about a whole bunch of the locals and give a little background on each of them. If you yeah, so, that. you know, kind of like what you're missing yeah. from Pittsburgh, what you don't know. What you don't, you know, 10, thing, 10 bands you don't know from Pittsburgh that you should or something like that might be a good future podcast. Anyways, so let's go ahead. Lily's got a couple of more. We're going to talk about what you guys said, and she wants to fight with somebody. And I'm I, not getting in her way. I'm fighting with you. Oh, me. You're the one that posted the damn thing. Anyway. So my next one on here is Iron Butterfly and Agata DeVita, which I hate saying, and I wrote it like a hundred times. In the garden with Rita, baby. (laughs) From their second studio album, In Agata DeVita, from 1968. American rock band formed in 1966 in San Diego. Uh, They provided a dramatic sound that led the way towards the development of hard rock and heavy metal. It's a 17-minute song. On the second album, and it was supposed to be titled uh, In the Garden of Eden, but Doug Engel had drank an entire gallon of Red Mountain wine and slurred the words so badly that it was interpreted as the current title. Um, It was a top 30 hit in 1968 and stayed on the charts for over a year. Um, They've had no new recordings since 1975, and Inagata DeVita is among the world's 40 best-selling albums, selling more than 40 million copies, and the first group to receive a platinum award. And that is their only hit. (laughs) Okay. Sadly, because it was a good song, even though it's a hundred years long, and it's, I can't. It's a, the the riff is really fun to play. It's very classic. It's very recognizable, <laughs> and I don't really know what else to say about it. But what, <laughs> was there another one on your list before we? I do have a. This is the fun one I was talking about. I put the Jaggers on here just because Donny Iris is in the band. <laughs> um, the song, the rapper, 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 rap. They call me the rapper. Second studio album. We went to a different schools together from 1970. American rock band formed in '64 in Pittsburgh. 
PA. They came to national attention with the song The Rapper, reached number one in the record world charts and number two in the Billboard Hot 100 in 1970, sold over one million copies and received a gold record. Um, of course, as everyone knows, the fa- one of the founding members and writer of the song was our own Donnie Iris. The band's name derives from the Pittsburgh English slang term Jagger Bush, meaning a thorny bush, as you all know. <laughs> Don't get caught. You're a bunch of Jagger Bush, so we better watch out. <laughs> if you drank too many Iron Cities, you might fall down a Jagger Bush, so you, you know, then then Ma's going to get mad at you. You could be lying on a porch to you <laughs> wash your shoes, your, your shoes off with a hose. Everybody likes the idea of doing a local podcast. So maybe we'll do that. Bill Damiano wants to get in on it, too. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about... Uh, Bill, uh, we could have you chime... We could have you... Uh, we could Zoom... We could put you, bring you in on Zoom. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun. Um, so, Lily is taking issue... What are you taking issue with? So you see a little picture there that you say you got off of the internet that just, you posted for... Oh, here's what I did. Stop. Let me just explain. Let me... Sp- Lucy! Lucy, let me explain you. Here's what I did. Mm-hmm. I Googled... Rock and metal one hit wonders images on Google. And that looked cool. I knew who those bands were. I picked it and put it up on the face. It looks cool, but it's wrong. Okay, so what's wrong with it? So first of all, we're going to talk about Helix. They did have a hit song called Rock You. Helix. They are my favorite Canadian. Is that a man about your boyfriend? No. Helix? No, because I lick. Anyway. Whoa! (laughs) And boom goes the dynamite. Canadian hard rock and heavy metal band formed in 74, which is my favorite Canadian hard rock band. Um, they formed for a Battle of the Bands contest in Ontario and quite frankly, completely underrated and forgotten about often. Um, they are best known for the song Rocky, released in 1984 in the album's Walk in the Razor's Edge. They have toured with the best, including Aerosmith, Rush, Motley, Cruella, Scooper, Whitesnake, Night Ranger, Heart, Quiet, Riot, plus more. Labatt Blue has used the song in commercials with new lyrics. And has been featured on the comedy Trailer Park Boys. If you ever watch it, that's a great show. However, they have a second song that was a top hit called Gimme Gimme Good Lovin'. Ranked at number 12 on the Billboard, making them not a one-hit wonder. Um, I couldn't tell you one song by Helix. Oh my god, you don't know Rock You. You know it if you heard it. I know you would What's know it, it again. Rock You. Gimme an R. Oh, you know yeah, it. I probably turned it off the first second I heard it. Yes. It sounds dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> it's not Rush, so I'm not. Interested. They've played with Rush. <laughs> no teasing. Um, so I, you know, I am the great Ludini, but I am not um, uh, musically omniscient. You don't know about Helix, that's and why. So I don't know about. So there's <laughs> things I don't know. And thank you. I I learned I learned that. I did not realize that. Um, did you want? What about? Okay, because Quiet Riot. Come on, feel the noise was like the big hit, but was were, what about mental health and and Mama We're All Crazy Now? Mama We're All Crazy Now did not make the top forty. What um, about mental health. Mental health is number thirty one. Me- mental health. It's not mental health. Mental health. Not mental health. Yes, <laughs> number thirty one. And come on, feel the noise came in at number five. Yes, come on, feel the noise is not their song, but Slade didn't make it a hit. No, we're talking about the bands yeah. that had the hit with it. Doesn't yeah. it's, it's uh, 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 irrevel- irrelevant. Irre- irre- it's not that. Oh God, I can't talk. Irrelevant. Irre- thank you. Uh, who wrote the song? Because well, a lot of times other songwriters write with bands and things like that. So I like, kind of feel that's why they put it as a like a one hit, though, when you found the photo, because they're not counting that song because it's a cover. Well, too damn bad. They're the one that made it a hit. So they do have two. It's Come On, Feel the Noise and uh, Well, I mean, I you know, and, and again, like another person is on that cover. I don't know if you know. Are you familiar with Aldo Nova? Mm-hmm. Okay, Fantasy, Fantasy was yeah. the big song that everybody knows, but Monkey on Your Back was a very cool song. I don't know if it I didn't charted check. as well as Fantasy. Fantasy was the big hit that he did. I didn't check those, but I knew right off the bat that Helix and Quiet Riot were wrong. See, so she's, she's right on. I jumped right on well, that Well, that's shit. why I got you sitting here, girl. As and uh, I looked at it, I'm like... Except Balls to the Wall. That's really the only song by them I know, although they are a cool band, and Udo has done some solo stuff that is very, very cool. And their guitarist, um, and his name just escapes me uh, off the top of my head, um, is uh, a, 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 as very prominent in Europe, known as a kind of a shredder, uh, does a lot of like... You know, he's kind of like a, a Guthrie Gov on uh, type, type musician. Um... Uh, thank you guys who chimed in. We had John Leone, Mike Tuval, Bobby Lamond, Mike Tuval again, Tony Lang. Tony Lang mentioned Con- Coney Hatch. I don't know. And who I that do is. not think that this song, uh, Tony, was a top 40 hit. We could look it up. 
Um, it was Monkey Bars, which got a lot of play. Oh, I know that Speaking song. of Pittsburgh, it got, I'm going to take a quick Google search here. Coney Hatch chart position. So what do we have? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not seeing. Um, um, here's here here it is. Uh, it says it's a whole second. Let's take a look. I'm taking a quick look at uh, uh, singles. Uh, you don't even know what you're doing right now. I'm looking at it online, and <laughs> I'm not seeing. You see monkey bars? Yeah, yeah there it is okay, from 1982. Yeah, but it's not. It, it says, like, Hey Operator was charted at number 19 in Canada, but I don't see a chart position for Monkey Bars. So I don't know. I, I do know a lot of people who know that song. That was, and, it, and, if you, and if you grew up in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh rock stations played that song. So I was kind of considered it kind of like a regional thing. We just appealed to people in Pittsburgh and we played it. Um, Mick, uh, Mick Doob. <laughs> Hi, Mick Doob. He says Slade. I'm looking them up right now. I don't think they actually had a top 40 hit. <laughs> Bobby Lamont, the whole Aldenova record rocks. Uh, bought that in high school and still sounds great. Angelo uh, says that solo in fantasy. How how you do? Oh, it? Angelo, I love him. Hot love, heart to heart, ball and chain. Uh, Brad, Brady Novotny says Aldenova. Uh, Victoria Ocus Ocus says Quiet Riot. Edwin uh, Mark Edwin Cole except John Fox says Yeah, those first two Aldo, Aldo Nova albums. So a lot I got a lot of Aldo Nova fans here. And if you guys, some of you younger folks may not know who Aldo Nova is. Great guitar player, um, singer from the um, I'd probably say early '80s. Went on to be a producer and produced albums for Bon Jovi and people like that. Um, so, he's still active in the in the music business, to, to the best of my knowledge. I believe that he still is. Um, Slade's songs never made top 40. So, although I do sort of like their version of Mama, We're All Crazy Now better than Quiet Riot's. Still, it was number 76 on the charts for them. So, Do you remember, um, they, they had a research. See, after Quiet Riot broke with Come On, Feel the Noise. They had a re- little Slade had a little resurgence with songs like um, a "Run Run Away" mm-hmm. and um, "My My Oh My." I don't know if I know which that was one. more, of, which was more of a ballad. I think it was called "My Oh My." Boy, my brain is just like your brain's I, just I, done I, today. I, no, it's not. I'm just done. It's <laughs> just like kidding. I mean, I'm pulling up stuff that like I yeah. totally forgot about. You know, come on, feel the noise for them was 98, 90 on the chart. So yeah, wasn't wasn't a big hit for them. Time, space, Quiet production, Riot, you know, matter. Quiet Riot. And and interesting thing about Come and Feel the Noise by Quiet Riot, I, that is considered the birth of hair metal. Mm-hmm. That's what that song is considered. That, that That's the really first hair metal song. And we could do a Thank show you, on, on that as well. I, I'm with Eddie Trunk um, on the whole term hair metal. I think that even uh, Sirius calling that station Hair Nation I, I find that it's uh, glam. I don't want to say it's a. I'm not offend. I'm not the kind of person that gets offended, but I just kind of feel like it's unfortunate because it marginalizes an era of music that was really influential, really popular, touched a lot of people, sold millions and millions and millions of records, sold out tons of tours, and there's this whole like stigma to this day. Over it, which I think is really unfucking fortunate. All right, Lily V6. Anything? We're gonna head over and party a little bit. Um, this, uh, I believe, this past week was the anniversary of the release of the album yes. Heavy Metal. Yeah. Thirty-eight years ago. I was and, just a little bud, and I have a great memory of going to see that uh, in college. They play. They they played it at um, some little auditorium in one of the buildings, and me and Willie Franklin had gone drinking. And we're, he's and because we were like waiting, the movie started like at ten o'clock at night or something. Well, it's and dirty. so we had gone drinking, <laughs> and he's like, "We're gonna go see heavy metal." And I was like, "I had always wanted to see it. I'd never seen it." 
and we went and we laughed our asses off. If you don't know the film, yes, it is 80s era animation, but it's voiced by people like John Candy and Harold Ramis. It's like, it is and it's funny as fuck. It's dirty. <laughs> It it's a dirty. dirty cartoon. It's got great music. And it's got great music from that era. You're like jamming to the music. You're laughing at these dirty cartoons. It's And it's got this kind of sci- weird sci-fi thing going on. I mean, like every, every, all the great music from Black Sabbath to Sammy Hagar. I mean, Don Felder from the uh, from the Eagles has like the best song he ever did is in that movie. T- 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 uh, Stevie Nicks, Journey, Cheap Trick. Just, just band after band is in. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so, so we're going to we're going to sort of celebrate that one uh, over uh, in our private uh, meeting there. And if you want to get involved with that, you can go to lulombardirocks.com and you can get access to our private group. It's, it's totally free. Just jump in. It's a really cool community of a lot of fun people. Uh, Lily, any parting thoughts, parting shots before we wrap up today's show? Um, just tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time for Hot Licks with Lily Six on Rock Rage Radio. Uh, just go to the website, rockrageradio.com, or download the free app on your phone, and you'll catch me talking about things and stuff. Things, things in it. Going down to things in it. <laughs> good um, stuff, good stuff. Real quick, uh, Lou Lombardi, excuse me, Lou Dini, rockandrollcircus.com is our website. Shout out to Rock Rage Radio and Classic 92.3. Shout out to Wolf's Customs as well. I'm holding the card up one more time. And Bill Damiano's podcast. Too. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Bill Damiano. Uh, PA Rocks. Is that it? Build the scene. Build the and scene. Build the scene, too. Um, but anyways, quick shout out to... Uh, one more shout out to Wolf's Customs. Check them out. Wolf'sCustoms.com. Uh, 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 Chris does some very interesting things with guitar refinishing. So if you want some custom finishes done on your guitar, check it out. Oh, that's about it. Uh, Lou Lombardi, go to Lou Lombardi Rocks, uh, dot com and uh, join us in our private group. Uh, really, guys, your support would mean a lot, and we could upgrade some of the stuff we're doing here. None of this shit's free. I mean, it looks free. I mean, just for example. <laughs> that's this, not free. <laughs> this ain't no Jim Beam, okay? This is Knob Fucking Creek, and this is, in fact, Small Batch, 100 proof. <laughs> it ain't cheap. So shit ain't cheap, we need to yo. we need to replenish the bar. What Lily's drink? Lily drink a white claw. That's not cheap. Look how look how much look at this. It's so big now because I'm drinking good things. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> good. So, anyways, so pay, uh, Lou, uh, patreon.com backslash Lou Lombardi. We do appreciate your support. All right, guys, we're gonna get the fuck out of here. Um, shout out to the bands. That's one. That's what I forgot. Thirteen Saints. Go to thirteen saintsbandcampcom Storm Dragon, Facebook.com backslash Storm Dragon Band, and Reign of Z, which is Reign of Z.com. Guys, we're going to get out of here with my latest single, Where Have All the Acid Queens Gone? Catch you guys on the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. (laughs) 